In this tutorial, let's look at the operations toolbar. How engineers do it. Before we start today's video, I would like to ask all my viewers to subscribe to my YouTube channel How Engineers Do It. So share the video among all of your friends and also hit the bell icon to never miss another update. Let's open up a part workbench and let's make sure that we are in the wireframe and surface design workbench and once we're on the wireframe and surface design pull out the operations toolbar and place it right here in order to explain the operations toolbar let's firstly create some surfaces to do that let's click on the sketch and select the xy plane and get into the sketch workbench now use the line and draw three lines one in each sketch make sure that the line intersects in this manner similarly draw the third line now we will do an extrude command on each line we will give a 40mm mirror extent and we will do the same thing for the two other lines. Now we can see three surfaces are intersecting and uh, they are crossing each other. So how can we make these three surfaces in a continuous, as a continuous surface? So this can be achieved easily by a trim command. The trim command is located in the operations toolbar under the split. So once we click on the trim, click on the trim and click on the portion which you would like to retain. Click here, here and here. As you can see, if you click on OK, you can see a continuous surface is being created with the label trim feature. In this way, the trim command works. Now let's see how a join command works. So before I explain the join, I would like to explain you how the disassemble command works. We have something called as disassemble here. So let's go ahead and disassemble. For example, I just need only these two surfaces to be connected. So what I would do is I would select the trim and go for the disassemble command. And if you see, you can see that all cells, that's three different parts. If I click on OK, you can see three different parts, datum surfaces are, are being created. This doesn't have a parent. This is completely isolated surfaces. Now, for example, as I explained, as I've said before, let's hide the parent, all these, and retain only, and retain only, the three surfaces which we have disassembled. Now, let me hide the first one and let's just go ahead. As you can see, if I select the surface, this is a single entity. If I would like to join these two surfaces, go here and click on the join and then select the surfaces that you would like to join. Click on OK. As you can see, now this particular surface act as one particular surface. Now you could go ahead and hide these two surfaces and unhide the join. That's how a join command works. Now let's delete all of these. And let's come back to our old surfaces. Now let's see how a split command works. In the split command, unlike the trim command, we have an option of element to cut and a cutting element. Say for example, this is the element that I would like to cut and this is my cutting element. So in this case, unlike the trim, the this particular portion is not being trimmed. If, it, if I had used a trim command, then this and this portion would have been cut. So you need to understand how the tool works so that in later point when you work on surfaces and automobiles or aircraft, 
designs, you will be able to use the right tool at the right place. Now let's click on OK and see how the output looks like. Now let me go ahead and delete this. Remember the output here. I'll delete this and I will do the vice versa. That is clicking on the split and this is the element to cut and this is the cutting element. Now as you can see, this particular portion has been removed. Now you must have understood how the split and the trim command works and how join and the disassemble command works. Now let's see how the intersection command works. As I was explaining you wireframe and wireframe toolbar, I have I've told you that I will be explaining you the intersection command later. As you can see, these two surfaces here are intersecting. How can I get the portion where the surfaces intersect? How you can do that is click on the intersect command and select the two surfaces here, click on the preview. As you can see, an intersection is being created and a curve is being projected on our specification tree. Now we have another option called as project. How we can work on a project or how we can use a project command is for example, I have a circle here. Okay, let's, let's just go ahead and uh, make a little modification on what I was about to do. So for example, I'll blend these two surfaces. Now, I will select this plane here and I would simply create a circle somewhere here. Now, I would like to project the surface to this uh, this curve to the surface. How we can do that is select the project, select the projected and this is the support and for the direction, go for along the direction and select this plane as the direction. Click on preview and you can see the circle is being projected as we have projected on a slope and ellipse is being projected here. So that's the output. That's the reason I have created a slope because I wanted you to use the along the direction and understand the project command very well. Now let's see what are the commands remaining here. As we can see sometimes when we work we need to extract or we need to receive the boundary of a particular uh, surface. Say for example I will click on the boundary and click on the surface here and if I click on OK the boundary is being selected here and now I could uh, select the boundary and uh, use any different command which I would like to use. That's about the uh, operation command. Now let's see how we can use the translate command. The translate command is uh, used by clicking on the translate and selecting the element and specifying the direction and then specifying the distance that you would like to translate. If you click on the repeat object, you could specify the number of elements that you would like to translate. So that's a pretty useful command when we work on continuous designs. Now, what is remaining finally is the ex the uh, extrapolate command. So this is pretty interesting tool here. So sometimes when we have curvature or ASA for example, let me let me create a curve here and uh, project it. I'll be showing you the extrapolate command in the uh, surface as you can explain it better. You could also do the same for the wireframe, that is this one. Go for the extrapolate, select this as a boundary and this as the extrapolate. Now you could click or move this and as you can see the curvature is being continued. We have two options, one is the continuity of a tangent or if you click on the curvature 
the same curvature will be continued or if you click on the tangent at the point where the extrapolation is done from there a tangent is being created with this curve so that's about the uh, extrapolate command you could use the same as I've mentioned before for the curve as well now if I explain it for the curve it will be easy for you to understand same thing I'm doing and as you can see the curve is being extrapolated that's about the operations toolbar. I hope you enjoyed. Let's see what comes in the next tutorial.